Community Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be discussing on simple classification of substances. And specifically, we are going to be looking at the physical and the chemical changes of components. Previously, in the previous videos, we looked at the criteria of purity. You can go and check out the videos in those lessons and be able to uh, learn on how various impurities affect uh, the melting point and the boiling point of substances. So in our lesson today, we are going to uh, work on the physical uh, temporary changes first, and then we're also going to discuss on the chemical uh, temporary changes, and then also we are going to look at the permanent chemical changes. We're going to look at the properties of each and every of these changes with examples. And then later on, you're going to do some questions in regards to what you're going to discuss for the lesson. So, uh, various substances usually, when subjected to heat, will behave differently. So they undergo some changes. Those changes can be grouped either as physical or chemical. So we have two large groups, physical, chemical, but uh, they can further be divided into smaller groups. So we also have the temporary physical and then the temporary chemical, and then we have the permanent chemical. So you can see we have majorly on the physical and chemical, and then we are breaking it down into small uh, sections. So we will start with a uh, temporary physical change. So temporary physical changes, Usually, are uh, changes where the it can be easily reversed. So when you start doing this, uh, when that substance is being heated, uh, that substance can actually go to its original state uh, after maybe something else is done to it. You are going to look at some examples uh, of these temporary physical uh, changes. So another property is that there's no new substance that is formed. So one thing, it's reversible, and then there's no, nothing new that is going to be formed. And then also the mass of the substance does not increase or decrease. And then it's not accompanied by any heat change. There are some reactions that release energy into the environment or heat into the environment. Other reactions, they absorb it from the environment. So for temporary physical change, they do not do so. So let's look at some of the examples of temporary physical changes. So an example of te temporary physical change is when zinc oxide is heated. So what happens in this reaction, the only thing that you see, the change that you only see in this reaction is the color change. And the color changes from white to yellow. So it is white when cooled and when heated, it turns to yellow. But this compound is still the same. We started with zinc oxide and we also end up with zinc oxide. When you look at the product, which is yellow in color, it can actually be reversed back into the white color when we cool it. So on heating, it turns white to yellow, like we've said. But when you cool it now, the yellow color will go back to white. This is a, a good example of a temporary physical change. Another example is melting of wax. So if you heat a solid wax, it's going to change from solid to liquid. But it's the same wax. The only difference that has happened is a change of state. If you cool it, it's going to go back into its original state. You can see there is no mass that is changing. You can see there is uh, no heat that is being evoked or absorbed. And you can see that this there is no something new that is being formed. It's the same component, it's the same compound. Another example is on iodine. We are going to, or as we discussed this, especially in sublimation, we talked about iodine. So when you heat iodine, it, stays, it turns from a shiny black solid into a purple vapor, but it is still iodine, but in different states. So if you cool it back, it goes back again into forming a solid. It doesn't form anything new. It's the same, same iodine. Don't note the colors. For the zinc, it was white to yellow, then back again to white. And then for solid wax, it doesn't have a specific color. The, I, the wax can come in different colors depending on the manufacturing. Uh, the, it can be colored or not. And then for iodine, it's shiny black and then it turns to a purple vapor. And then that vapor turns back again into a, so, a shiny uh, black uh, solid. 
So let's go to the next uh, change. It's still on uh, temporary change, but it is temporary physical change. So uh, for temporary physical change, the unique that is dif the uniqueness that is different uh, with the temporary physical change is that it can be reversed. This is something the same. Uh, temporary physical change and temporary chemical change component compounds can be reversed. And then what is different is that a new substance is usually formed. Unlike from before when we were looking at our zinc and wax and also the iodine, we notice it's the same substance. But with this change, a new substance is formed. So let's look at the characteristics. So a new substance is formed. This is different from the initial properties. Heat can be evoked or absorbed. There is a change in mass and the change can be reversed. You see that the only thing that is the same with the previous is that it's new, uh, that the change can be reversed. This is the only similarity we have with temporary physical change. Everything else is new. So let's look at examples of these changes. So for example, the first example is heating hydrated copper 2 sulfate. And note it is hydrated, hydrated copper 2 sulfate. This means it has the water of crystallization. Water of crystallization. If you see the actual hydrated copper 2 sulfate, it's still in powder form, but the fact that it has some water of crystallization makes it, it to have a specific color. So it is usually blue in color when it is hydrated. We start with a blue color. And when it is heated, that water of crystallization is given off. So when it's given off, it changes from hydrated to anhydrous. Anhydrous is a compound that do not have water of crystallization. And the color changes from blue to white. It is important for you to note this color. This is a very common uh, uh, reaction that is used for testing water. And so it is important for you to remember the color changes. So if you take your anhydrous copper 2 sulfate and water, if you add water to the anhydrous copper 2 sulfate, it changes back into hydrated copper 2 sulfate. Although if you just take it on its own and cool it, there's no, there's no change that is going to happen. We need to be able to add, to add uh, water back again into anhydrous copper 2 sulfate for us to get the initial uh, reactants. One thing that is similar with these examples uh, with the temporary physical changes is that it can be reversed. If you add water to this anhydrous copper 2 sulfate, it's going to turn back to hydrated copper 2 sulfate. Note down the colors. The next compound that behaves in this manner is Colbert 2 chloride. It is pink in color. So if you decompose it, this is the hydrated, the one that has water of crystallization. Note the color, it's pink. When you heat it, it changes back, it changes to anhydrous colbert 2 chloride, which is blue in color and some water vapor is produced, meaning we have removed water from this compound. So we are forming a new substance and you can see we are losing some water. So definitely the mass will change. But now, if you take your anhydrous colbert 2 chloride, which is blue in color, and you add some few drops of water to that product, it's going to turn back into hydrated colbert 2 chloride, which is pink in color. So you can see this is a temporary chemical change because you can see new substances are being formed. They are not the same. This is hydrated, the one is anhydrous. But if you add back the previous uh, React product, you're going to get the reactant as it was initially. So next, we look at uh, uh, permanent chemical changes. So permanent chemical changes, as you can hear from the word, it's a permanent reaction. It cannot be reversed. It's a chemical change, meaning you get new substance. So one of the, you notice it's completely opposite the temporary physical change. Every property of temporary physical change is completely contrary to this. So for temporary physical change, no new substance were formed, but for permanent change, new substance is being formed. For temporary physical change, the change is reversible. This one is irreversible.
for temporary physical change, the change is not accompanied by any change of mass. But in this case, for the permanent chemical change, there will be a change in mass. And then for temporary physical change, there is no heat that is being released or absorbed. But when you look at permanent chemical change, the heat is released and it can also be absorbed. So examples of these permanent chemical changes are heating of copper nitrate. So if you heat copper nitrate, which is usually blue in color, it's going to release some gases into the air. And this is a mixture of gases. It's a mixture of nitrogen 4 oxide, which is red brown in color, and oxygen, which is colorless. So you can see there will be a definite change in mass because you are losing some uh, gases into the atmosphere. So, and then you notice we are forming something which is completely different from what we started with. We are going to form copper 2 oxide, which is black in color. We are going to see this later in hair and combustion, the colors of copper 2 oxide. So it's black in color. So there is a change in, in mass and also you can see a new substance is formed. And even if we are going to add this uh, reactant together, we cannot get the initial product that we had. So it cannot be reversed. And this process releases some amount of heat into the environment. So that's it. Um, let's look at uh, one question in regards to what we have just discussed. So the apparatus below was used by a student to study the effect on hydrated copper 2 sulfate. Even before we begin the answering question, we know that hydrated copper 2 sulfate is blue in color. The colors must be right. So we heat hydrated copper 2 sulfate and then liquid P is produced. We know this hydrated has water of crystallization. So when we heat it, we know definitely liquid P is going to be water. Because you can see it is in steam state and then when it comes into contact to the cooler environment of the ice, it changes from a liquid, uh, from a gaseous state into liquid state. So what is the role of the ice cold water? This is the to cool the steam that is produced. And then let's look at the next question. What is liquid P? We have said it is water. Remember the water of crystallization is removed as we heat the hydrated copper 2 sulfate. Then what observation is made in the boiling tube? So our observation will be the color change. It is changing from blue to white. And you need to be specific. It is hydrated copper 2 sulfate, which is blue in color, changes to anhydrous. Copper 2 sulfate, which is white in color. If you do not mention the anhydrous part, you're not able to know, like, if this we are working with hydrated or, or anhydrous. You need to be very, very specific. So, this brings us to the end of what we have been discussing. So, see you in the next lesson.